We are GTR, Ghana Talks Radio. Get it big, get it here. Listen to all your live mixes, live radio programs, and live entertaining and news package programs right here from GTR, Ghana Talks Radio. GTR News. GTR News. We bring you local news, business news, international sports and entertainment news right here on GTR. GTR. We bring you local news, business news, international sports and entertainment news right here on GTR. GTR. Yeah, good afternoon. Another brand new day. So it's time for the afternoon news right here on Ghana Talk Show. Then I go by the name Regina Blair. So to our headlines, dilapidated building collapses on student at Shama. LGBTQI billboard on Chama Motor will pull down after some Dutch threat. This and more stories coming up. Stay tuned. We bring you local news, business news, international sports and entertainment news right here on GTR. GTR. So without wasting much time moving to our stories, a dilapidated school block believed to have been constructed in 1902 by the Catholic mission has collapsed on Shamajina High School students in the western region. The headmaster of the Shama Catholic School, Augustine Yamiche, said the, inc- the incident occurred on Wednesday, June 8, 2022, at about 6.45 hours in the morning. According to him, the JHS two students had reported to the school and were tied in. Up the environment when the weak block without notice collapsed and fell on the right hand of the student. We were fortunate that when the wall collapsed, they didn't fall on the head of the student, else we wouldn't have heard the good news, but the blog landed on her lips. Luckily, it is not fractured, Mr. Nyamiche said. According to him, the situation would have been worse if the incident occurred at a later hour because then more students would have reported to school. The headmaster indicated, however, that authorities from the Assembly and District Education Office in the region have visited the school and directed that the students vacate the block to avoid future havoc. Moving to our next story, LGBTQI billboard on Tamamoto will pull down after some George Strait. City authorities have pulled down a billboard supposedly promoting LGBTQI activities on the Accra Tamamoto way. The member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George, disclosed this in a Facebook post, he said the billboard was pulled down after a media engagement with city authorities. Sam George had issued a 24-hour ultimatum to authorities to pull down the billboard, which he described as illegal. Over the weekend, our attention was drawn to an illegally illegality that flies in the face of the Constitution of Ghana. Article 11 and 26, which talks about Ghana's cultural sovereignty, we notice that a billboard promoting the activities of LGBTQ activities has been mounted along the motorway. As sponsors of the bill before Parliament and as members of Parliament who represent the aspirations and role of Ghanaians, we have deemed it important to show up here today to register in the strongest way our uh, displeasure, discomfort, and abhorrence for this unholy, uncultural, and untraditional advertisement that has been put up on this road, the MP had said. Sam George and eight other MPs are sponsoring an anti-LGBTQ bill on the promotion of proper human sexual rights that prescribes that people of the same sex who engage in sexual activity 
could spend up to 10 years in jail so regarding that they have pulled down the bill so moving to our next story one fear dead two others injured in gun battle at kokobiti one person is feared dead while two others including a 15 year old boy are receiving treatment at the hospital following a gun battle at kokobiti in the gas south municipality Sources say the two factions are involved in the gun battle over who has the right to perform rituals to lift the ban on drumming and noise making. It is unclear who the culprits are, but calm was restored to the area after the Kokobite police visited the area. The ban on drumming and noise making in the gas state commenced on May 9, 2022. One faction warned the other not to engage in drumming and noise making since a chief of the town is dead, but that didn't go down well with the members of the other faction who took up arms and started firing resulting in the death of one or two others including a 15 year old boy sustained gun short wounds, Mary Obichesa and eyewitness said. Leadership of the two factions have been invited to the police headquarters for more inter- interruption. So, Facebook Star arrested a 23-year-old man, Samuel Sapon, who has allegedly been defrauding unsuspected victims of huge sums of money, is in the grips of the Asiama Divisional Police Command in the Elembela district of the Western region. Sapon was arrested on Thursday for allegedly defrauding people concerning job recruitment. According to the police, many victims have paid huge sums of money to the fraud star with the hope of being given employment. A police source indicated that the suspect uses names like Lawyer King and Esther Ifia Abankwa on Facebook to advertise jobs to persons desperately searching for employment opportunities. It was guarded that many ladies in search of jobs must fall victim to this dubious plant. The source mentioned that the suspect was arrested after he lured a lady from Nkoko in the eastern region to the Elambella area on Sunday, June 5th. All news. All news. He deceived the lady into believing that he would help her continue her education. She was also assured she would get an opportunity to work in a company run by the suspect. The lady then traveled from Nkoko to the western region, only for the suspect to dupe her and abscond with her cash and handbag containing her valuables. Samuel Sapon disguised himself as a taxi driver and went to pick up the lady. He later managed to secure the lady's mobile pin code, which he used to withdraw about 1,000 CDs from her account on the night she arrived in the town and absconded. After the incident, the lady reported the case to the police who launched a manhunt to arrest the suspect and was subsequently arrested ASP Kofi Dakun, divisional police commander in the area. In the area confirmed the story and said the police retrieved some items including a mobile phone and voter's identification cards among others on him. He advised the youth also, especially ladies, to use legitimate ways to seek job offers and not rely on anyone they meet on social media. He assured that the investigation will be expanded and all the victims will get justice. We're going on a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with the political and business news. Stay tuned. Ghana Talks Radio, I a woe UK, a British memo, and a film and Ghana Muha at the sound system, which is spinning machine, papa, pa, a free and man, and never be good among Ghana Muha. It is a way a year, way engagement, way a wedding, way a birthday party. Political parties are more year rally, some way a sorry, a more year crusade. So we we'll book carnival or any kind of event. Now we we'll spinning machine, papa pa a boa sound in the mu at the dia and you may come for GTR sounds at the MO. Your yeah, live band and so I will turn sa at the frame, yeah, you beat me, ababa boa, ama would you media wood and so at me I come up. 
ya wo enkan pumpuni mantemo anya aponchi hotel e ho pepepe e na yebutu wo dia ne se wo be frɛ empenifuo e wo 0546960510 gtr sounds e mu wo de angaza <laughs> Duty our news. Duty our news. Duty our news. Welcome back from the break. If you just joined your life on Ghana Talks Radio, and this is the afternoon. So moving to some political stories. Ofori Atama's brief parliament on na- on national cathedral expenditure minority says the minority in parliament is demanding that finance minister Ken Ofori Atta be dragged before the house to answer questions on how 25 million Ghana cities was advanced to the natural to the national cathedral secretariat for the construction of the cathedral the minority says the national cathedral project is not a government project and wonders how public funds will be used for it speaking on the floor of the house np for adakula covers kwame agboza said the finance minister has a lot of questions to answer. I will request that the very sensitive issue about government expenditure on the National Cathedral, of which has been in public domain and payments made from the public coffers, is discussed. I believe it will be in the interest of this country for the finance minister to brief the House on the circumstances leading to the spending of that expenditure because it is believed that those expenditures could be out of what the public procurement and the public financial minister act requires moving to our next political story Stephen in team picks nomination forms to via for npp chairmanship position national chairman hopeful hopeful of the new patriotic party mr Stephen ayesu in team on thursday june 9 2022 picked his nomination forms. The forms were picked by the campaign manager for Mr. Stephen in team, Mohamed Ejei Sora, former mayor of the Accra metropolitan area. Speaking to a few media persons after the picking of the forms, Ejei Sora emphasized that Mr. Stephen Ayesu in team is in the competition to win. Let me state with emphasis that Chairman Stephen in team is in this race to win. We are not going to be complacent even though we know and by the work done so far, we shall win. So far, the break the eighth campaign tour has yielded fruit and we hope to come out victorious at the end of the day. It is the firm resolve of Mr. Intim that if he is elected as national chairman with determination and unity, the dreaded Eight cycle would be broken, he stated. So now moving to some business stories. Bro Ghana calls for awareness creation on Real Estate Agency Act. Bro Ghana Limited, the property services firm, wants more awareness created on the Real Estate Agency Act 2020. The act seeks to regulate real estate agency practice and commercial transactions in real estate, including the sale, purchase, rental, and leasing of real estate. The company believes the only way to see to the full implementation of the act is for industry players to spearhead the education on the act to the public and other relevant stakeholders. The call was made during an industry network event organized by Bro Ghana Limited. It was on the team Bro Drivers on key trends in the Ghanaian real estate market. The government has done its part by passing the act. It's the industry players that have to create advocacy that will push the implementation and the actual prosecution of the act. Primarily, because we are the ones that are going to use it at the end of the day, it is in our interest that it is implemented, said the chief executive officer of the firm, Tony Sechi. So moving to our next business story, Wakano on this new branch in East Legon to expand services to customers. As the world continues its recovery from the grave impact of the COVID pandemic, Ghana 
has recommended a continuous upward trend in international and domestic travel. People continue to embrace their need to connect and explore as borders are open and health restrictions eased. On the hill of this, Wakano.com, a leading travel agency in Ghana, with its head office located at Millennium Heights Building, 14 Castle Hill Ford Road Airport Commercial Area, made a strategic decision of taking the leading delighting its customers by opening a ticketing office in HD Logon, Accra. With the new center, Wakano has position itself to support its customers across all channels with their travel needs as travel demand continues to increase and are, and are now closer to their customers in the heart of Accra. With an ultra modern ticketing center on the first floor of the Battle House on Third Boundary Road near Belly Gate, Bacano's hybrid model of being an offline and online agency further solidified by the massive investment it has made in technology over the years, enabled business sustainability through the pandemic over the years, its innovative approach in the development of new complementary products has made it the one-stop shop for all travel services, thus providing a more seamless and smoother travel experience for its customers. Moving to our international stories. Kenya audit finds 250,000 dead people on voters roll. Kenya's electoral agency says an ongoing audit of its voters roll has found the names of nearly 250,000 deceased voters on the register. Nearly half a million more voters were found to have duplicate records and more than 226,000 people were registered using documents that do not belong to them. Others had registered with invalid documents. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission said in a statement on the anomalies that affect more than a million people. IEBC Chairman Wafuli Chibukati said that because of the implementation of the preliminary audit findings, the Commission will delay certifying the final register for publication. The Commission said earlier that it would publish the register of voters on or before 9th June, but has pushed that to 20 June as it seeks to address the findings by KPMG, the firm contracted to do the audit. Electoral irregularities in past elections in Kenya have led to deadly violence. This year's elections will be held in 9th June. Four presidential candidates have been cleared to run in the election. David Moa George, Rally Odinga, and William Ruto. So, to some entertainment stories Prince Harry, William Mayton, expected in a guest for this reason. Duty on you, Duty on you. Prince Harry will return to UK and likely to reunite with his elder brother, Prince William, on the death anniversary for their mother, Princess Diana, in August. The 25th death anniversary of Princess Diana will fall on August 31st. According to royal expert Richard Fitzwilliams, the two brothers could reunite for the death anniversary of Diana in August. He said, and also with the 25th anniversary, we don't know what's going to happen quite a bit me again, featuring William and Harry possibly, so I think that will be difficult. Prince Harry visited the UK with wife Meghan and their children Archie and Lilibert during the Platinum Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth. However, Royal Atta Angela Levin claimed that the Duke of Sussex looked absolutely furious over brother's snob. Harry and Meghan reportedly invited William and Kate Middleton to Lilibet's birthday party at Frogmore Cottage on June 4th. The Cambridges were unable to attend the birthday as they were miles away in Cardiff, Wallace for a pre-scheduled engagement. So this is where we'll end the afternoon news right here on Ghana Talk Show. Did I go by the name Regina Bliss. Stay tuned for the lunchtime with them right on Ghana Talk Show. Again. This is Ghana Talks Radio, the best station rocking the nation.